Ellis, the car doctor. Today's patient is a O2 Ford Escape. Escape. <laughs> <laughs> they take very good care of this car for it to be an O2. Um, you know, good tires, um, upkept very well. Um, they just do their regular maintenance. The history, back history of this vehicle is it was her dad's and he got it back in 05. He used to be somewhat mechanically inclined and he used to take care of it himself. You know, that why it's so up kept so well. But now, you know, poor fella got Alzheimer's and you know, they're looking toward shops to keep this thing up and running. So. Listen, handsome, I hate to be the grammar police, <laughs> but it's Alzheimer's. I know Alzheimer's. You, I, I know you country folks likes to say Alzheimer's. Uh, all time. <laughs> Alzheimer's. <laughs> all right, I got it kind of pre-wrecked up. Uh, just popped the hood. Let's take a look at this quote together. Um, they explained to me, they wanted to bring it to me, but they know I'm very busy. And they were like, oh, I don't want to bother Alex. So they got it checked out by another shop. I'm not going to put nobody on blast. That's not what I'm here to do. So I got that folded out. Um, and plus, they probably don't know any better. So, let's see what they're saying it needs. Valve covers, okay, oil pan gasket, timing cover gasket, and shop supply fee, $50. $50? Yeesh. No. My shop, shop supply fee is what? Wait, cap at twenty nine ninety nine, dollars but it could be lower depending on the job. Yeah, okay. So, so that's, that added up to $2,600. And forty-three dollars and thirty cents. I don't even think that car worth that. But that's not what we're here for. Let's pop the hood. And I think the mileage on this puppy is around for those who are interested in seeing the mileage. Let's take a look. Oh. oh okay, here you go, sweetie. Come on, go on in there and take a look at that. 187 and some change. 187.771. So almost 200,000 miles. Pretty impressive. For a Florida state. Yep. So they didn't mention anything else. What did I do with that paper that quick? Oh, I left it inside. Okay. Um, just remember, guys valve cover gasket, oil pan, and front timing cover. <sighs> Seems a little suspect to me. We're about to find out. So the original complaint is, is leaking, leaking oil. oil. Yes, okay. leaking oil and smoking or something like that. So just looking around this puppy, I see some oil leaks down up in the front. This is the valve cover right here. Up here, it looks pretty good. It uh, looks pretty dry, pretty dry, but normally they don't leak right there. They leak in the very front. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I just like to start from the top and work my way down. Check my belts, pull on it a little bit, see how the tensioner feel. That feels quite normal. Um, nothing too much to see up top. Let's go ahead and go up with it. Thanks, that was funny. There you go. And I always like to get the car about a couple of inches off the ground and rock the mess out of it. So if it does fall, it's not gonna hurt anything. Yeah, I won't kill myself once I go up and decide to fall off. Yeah. So safety first. All right. All right, got it all up in the air. Um, I'm gonna shake down the front end. That's just what I do out of habit. Feels good. Boom, 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 boom. Got some good tires on there. Yeah. <laughs> so, from a glance, I see a lot of oil that's been burning on this exhaust downpipe and just oil all up through here. And I don't know if you can see this, but that looks like my source. Way up there from the front of the valve cover, like I mentioned. Um, looks like that's where the leak is coming down from. Now, guys, I always tell my customers and um, 
mechanics striving to be better um, when chasing down oil leaks you got to start from the top then work your way down uh, because what's going to happen is that top leak is going to drizzle down the wind is going to catch it and it's just going to spread everywhere so you have to consider that but just looking at the oil pan i don't think we have oil pan issues uh, can i see a little bit in the back it's really hard to see yeah could it be timing front timing cover yeah but this also could be the top drizzling down and it's just blowing all over the place so the proper procedure when it comes to this thing uh, you know to come to tracing down oil leaks and being easy on the customer wallet because of course they don't care they go oh yeah let's reseal the whole engine while we at it and you got infinite amount of money we want your money anyway or they will sell you all that stuff and not even do it you know how these shops can be um so what i'm gonna recommend is the valve cover gasket clean everything up have her drive it um for about maybe a good couple of weeks to a month bring it back in and we re-inspect speaking of inspection i'm gonna finish mines um see if anything they miss i like to look at brake lines especially on these older vehicles and i've already seen something that's out of place let me see if I can turn this wheel look at this brake line is completely ripped and i feel it up here too so they should have been selling this lady brake lines and oh yeah over here too check this out that's not safe guys when the outer rubber wear out and exposing the cord that's not good and it's very hard too um they should have been doing that so it is very important to get a second opinion or listen to your mechanic because I have another example over here next uh, back a two rows over that the customer didn't listen to me down there um, let's take you over there because I'm pretty much finished with this I see one more thing look like this um, wire for the knock sensors riding on the egr piping guess what that is mm -hmm. so we're going to secure that out the way too it's burning it yeah it's burning the harness um all right let me take you over to the pontiac we'll explain what's going on it's not about the money when it comes to my shop these hands are blessed i'm gonna get business and plus i will go out of business speaking of business i'll go out of business before i rip anybody off yes i could have easily sold that lady all that thing you know all that stuff $2,600 worth of things she don't need. But, you know, I like to build my business off of trust. Um, I want them to come to me and my technicians and be able to, hey, yeah, this guy know what he's talking about. I'm gonna listen to him and, you know, all will be well. But prime, well, not but, but prime example, this customer right here, um, when the car came, first came to me, the engine was all, the top intake was all apart, screws everywhere. He had other people fooling around with it. And he had previous um, mechanics tell him in, needed, telling him that he needed intake. And so when the car came here, I had a good conversation with him. I was like, you know, talking it over with him. And I was like, dude, it's a good chance you blew your head gasket. You don't need an intake. Uh, you need to put a motor in this thing because it's a good chance I'm gonna put all this stuff back together and you're gonna need an engine. So he opted for me putting it all back together. And guess what? When I ran my test after it was put back together, um, the car didn't even start first off. So I ran a compression test on the first three cylinders. I wasn't even gonna fool with the back. It's kind of hard to get to. And I wanted to kind of get a baseline of, get a feel for the engine. So this first cylinder right here, 10 PSI. The next cylinder, 40 PSI. No, 20, I think, 20 or 40. Then the last one over here, 140. So that indicates it has a head gasket issue and this engine is toast, like I try to tell them. So when customers don't listen to me, it, you tell them get a second opinion, but now he has to pay 
for you for the labor for nothing. Oh. He could have just left and been like, all right, I can get a motor. But, but I, I guess I get it. You're trying to save money, but mm -hmm. normally when normally when customers don't listen to me, it don't end well for one. Well, I'll go over there and get the quote written up for that one and give her a treatment plan. A lot of people think, oh, Alex, the car doctor. We actually do try to run this like a doctor's yeah, we office. Do. <laughs> so we're going to give her a treatment plan. And if the first um, frugal treatment works for her, just the valve cover gaskets, mm -hmm. all will be well. And that's what I like to do here at Alex, the car doctor. I don't like to just throw the book at the situation. Oh, yeah, I need this, this, that, that. You know, most of the time, it's just as simple as a valve cover gasket job and not the rest of the stuff. You can clearly see it's leaking really bad and it's gonna come down like I mentioned. So, mm -hmm. so I'll recommend that first. Let's do it. So the customer approved my treatment plan for this vehicle here. Um, I was able to get a quote down for the, I think the valve cover gasket parts and labor about 500 bucks um, and also um, get her the things that she actually need done, which is very important for her safety, which is those brake lines. So that's what we're doing now. I got Raphael starting on it, um, tearing it down and everything. Um, Cause I gotta keep my guy busy. So I won't be working on this one. You know how it goes guys. <laughs> right. I think everything, valve cover, clean it up and brake lines put her like at a thousand bucks. So she's still coming out cheaper. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, I'll show you guys in a little bit but that valve cover gasket job, the intake gotta come off. It's a lot of parts that have to come off. Um, so parts and labor, somewhere under a thousand, like my wife said. Yeah. Um, would you put the exact amount up in here? Somewhere? I got you, okay. right cool, now. Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's see So while we was tearing it down, we discovered that one of the bolts wasn't tight this one so that's potentially where it's potentially why it was leaking so we're gonna finish up and get it back to the customer all right one of my guys already completed the job i'm just looking over everything now it seems like he got a little skip to it so i'm gonna figure that out he's already sprayed it down with the degreaser so i'm just gonna rinse it off oh it seems like my lines are pink there we go Now I'm going to have to blow this off because what's going to happen is this water is going to get down in the spot to cause a more skipping problem. I'll get that in a little bit too. This is getting wet. Mm. Just got finished rinsing it down. I'm about to check over everything. Um, like I mentioned, it has a little skip to it. Probably a foil or something that's not plugged in back there. That's my guess. Um, let me put it back in, look under at least of it, make sure I got all the grease off, probably spray it down with some brake clean, and deliver it. Got the tensioner on, got the brake lines, and then I'm going to flash light on it. But let me turn the wheel this way so we can see. All new brake lines in the front. Well, brake hoses I always mix hoses up with lines. All right, let me pull it on in. So if you noticed before, I wet the top area here. Um, what can happen is water can get down in the spark plug wells, cause skipping issues. Um, so I'm just gonna blow this off. <laughs> Gonna pull the coils up. See if water got down in there. And looks pretty dry. Yeah, so we're golden. Alrighty. Alright, Raphael figured quickly figured out why it was skipping the um coils that was turned around the wrong way. I don't know if you remember what it looked like before, but it's supposed to look like this. 
um, it was like flipped around. You had a lot of extra hardness right here. It looked like it was slack, slacked up. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Now she's back purring like a kitten. Um, I already raced the check engine light. I'm going to give it a drive and see what she does. She should be good to go. Just got back from the test drive. Everything went well. Um, I had to help my guy out with some vacuum hoses. The fuel trims was all over the place, um, meaning it was gonna throw a system too lean because the vacuum wasn't right. It's getting too much air and not enough fuel. Unmetered fuel, that's what it's professionally called. Um, everything went great. Um, checked for the leaks already. You know, rechecked it, looked under it, and as dry as it wanna be. Um, this was a job well done. So this goes to show guys, get a second opinion. Some don't sound right. I'm like, mm, sound like you're just trying to throw a bunch of parts at my car. Get a second opinion. Can't go wrong with one. See if it matches up with the first one. If it matches up with the first one to the T, you're like, okay, yeah, this dude was talking like he got some sense. Let me go back and give him my business because he earned it. <laughs> All right, until next time. Love you guys. See you on the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe. Support your boy, Alex the Car Doctor. Take care. Bye-bye.